Hello. Welcome to today's broadcast. My name is Abide Miwato. And uh, today's uh, part seven in our series on in times like this, how should we live? How should we conduct ourselves? Um, because times like this, the Bible calls them perilous times. The demand that we know how to conduct ourselves. You know, otherwise, one may not exit such time in <laughs> in top form. Okay, so we've been looking at what uh, we need to do. First of all, we need to review our life, you know, the foundation of your life. Um, also, how your walk, you know, is, you know, in terms of how it tallies, how it lines up with God's way of um, doing things with his lordship and so on and so forth. Uh, then we talked about how we need to find and recover our purpose because that's, that will provide us with something to focus on our energy on rather than uh, being consumed by all the negativity, the fear, you know, the, um, you know, the insecurity, you know, that's, that's in the atmosphere by virtue of what's going on. But when we are focused on the purple bonding, it gives us the opportunity to be um, grounded, the opportunity to be uh, um, fulfilled, to be happy, you know, even though we're going through the situation like everybody else. And uh, yeah, we talked about how we can identify the, the purpose and you know how we can set about fulfilling that purpose you know how we can set about fulfilling that purpose we talked about the gift of grace we talked about supernatural gifts as well that we need to be able to fulfill the purpose and we read abacock chapter 2 verse abacock of chapter 2 verse 2 which talks about how to write it down make it plain so that you can run with it effectively so yesterday we concluded by saying a lifestyle of uh, prayer um, and, the, and meditating in the word of God, absolute essentials for us to be able to fulfill God's purpose for our generation, because that's what we should be focusing on at this time. Okay, and remember that purpose is first of all uh, to bless God, to bring him pleasure by fulfilling it. And secondly, a blessing to others. And it's in blessing other people. That's when we get blessed ourselves, because a generous soul, the Bible says, will be enriched and he who waters will also be watered that's what the bible uh, says so in a real wow <laughs> it seems to be a bit happening a few things happening on my next just bear with me and uh, stick with me because today we're going to go and talk about you know the need for dedication in order to be able to fulfill that purpose that god has placed upon our lives we need to be dedicated to it and to start off, I'm going to read, um, uh, okay, yesterday we read John chapter 4, verse 34, talking about Jesus. But let's just refresh ourselves, just read it again. John 4, 34, looking at the right attitude, the kind of attitude we're meant to have in order to be able to fulfill God's purpose for our lives. Okay, Jesus is a perfect example, right? So let's see the attitude that he had. John 4, 34, and it says, Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Okay. Jesus' food, that is what made him, what kept him alive, what fueled his earthly life here. You know, just like food fuels our body, our physical bodies. What fueled his life in terms of, you know, uh, not just his physical body now. <laughs> uh, it talks about how man shall not live by bread alone, right? But by every word that comes out of the word by the mouth of God. So Jesus said, this one thing fueled his life while he was here on earth. He says, that thing was to do the will of him who sent him and to finish his work. All right. So in the same way that Jesus was sent, so each one of us has been sent as well. We've covered that. And that each one of us has a purpose and a, and go, and a plan that God has for our lives. So... The attitude that we need to have is the same 
as Jesus' attitude. Remember, you know, we talked about in Philippians how he said that, you know, um, you should have the attitude of humility, you know, um, knowing who you are, but at the same time being humble about it. But here's another attitude that Jesus had that we need to have as well. The attitude of taking what God has given us to do as what fuels our lives, okay, as our food, you know, as the food for our life, for our existence, without which we cannot exist. So uh, we cannot be fulfilled, we cannot live basically. So doing the will of the Father, that is God's purpose for your life, and finishing his work, because it's his work, we said, is you are just a custodian of all, a steward of all the gifts, right? So the gifts are there for you to be able to minister his grace. They are called gifts of grace. To be able to minister his grace and power, supernatural uh, gifts, his grace and power to other people. All right, so that's one. Then let's go on to Luke chapter 2 and verse 49. This uh, came up earlier on in Jesus' life, actually. Uh, this was at, at a, in a situation whereby um, when he was young, he was young, he used to go with his family uh, from, you know, his hometown to Jerusalem, the city, the capital city, to the uh, temple there, I mean, especially during the feasts. So during a particular feast, he went and he was only... I think it must have been, you know, around 12, 13 at the time, around the time when the young um, Hebrew children got bar, bar mitzvah, they call it, call it. So he must have gone there at the time. So he, he was engrossed in chatting with the uh, priests and the scribes and all those people. But when it was time for them to go back home, <laughs> um, the parents forgot him in the sense that he, they left him. They just didn't remember that he wasn't in the company. So they had traveled for two days before they realized that, wow, where is Jesus? So in any case, so they now came and started looking for him. And um, in when they found him, he, he posed a particular question to them, which showed the attitude, that attitude of commitment. Now, he didn't just develop it when he grew up, but he had it growing up. He had that passion, that dedication to God's purpose and God's plan. Okay, he said, uh, and he said to them, okay, hang, hang on, let me just read it from, uh, let me take it from verse 48. So when they saw him, that is uh, the, the parent, him, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? So really, looking at, you know, in times like this, one of the things that we need to take very seriously is the fact that we need to be about our father's business. We need to be able to discern, you know, what God is doing right now and how we fit in, you know, in the light of what God is doing, you know, on the earth. Remember, everything, every purpose for every single one of us fits into God's agenda, God's plan, God's purpose for, for the earth, all right, to bring his kingdom here on earth. So we need to find out what he's doing now and begin to play our part so that we can, um, like Jesus, have that attitude that we must do the Father's will and fulfill, you know, and finish the work he sent us to do his work so i'm just going to run through a few other ingredients that uh you know we need to put in place we need to have in place to be able to help us to fulfill god's purpose in times like this okay so the first one really is the fact that we need to put god first we said something similar to it when we're talking about our walk with god how that is jesus really the lord of our lives does he have the final authority in our lives how do we relate with god in, in the light of his word okay so this is important putting god first and his kingdom we see that in matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 which is very very crucial to us fulfilling god's purpose for our lives especially in times like this okay jesus said 
But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Uh, Jesus is saying here that, you know, most times people get involved, <laughs> engaged in so many things that they don't need to be engaged in. All right. These are the things that distract us. These are the things that hinder us from fulfilling God's purpose for our lives. But uh, the, the main thing here is to seek first. I actually have a, a, a product where I talk about the kingdom of God in depth, you know, in terms of DVDs. Um, CDs, and subsequently there'll be a book about it as well. So if you're interested, let me know. But this is absolutely crucial that we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, it says there, and all other things, everything else I can think of. Is it what you will eat? Is it what you will wear? Is it whatever else you can think of, the Bible says it will be added unto you. I like shortcuts, right? I like shortcuts that work. <laughs> so if Jesus said, seek first something and then all other things will be added, well, you bet I'm going to drop all the other things and I'm going to begin to seek first um, what he said we should seek first. Believe me, that is a challenge going through life. There will be seasons where it's easy for you to seek first the kingdom of God. And some other seasons where there'll be distractions, especially seasons where the enemy will just come at you in different ways, you know, to distract you mainly so that you're not focused on seeking first the kingdom of God, you know. So we need to have that in place. Our focus must be first and foremost, you know, to seek God, all right, to seek him, you know, and all and his righteousness so that all the other things will be added to us as Jesus promised us, Okay. Then, secondly, uh, there is the issue of singleness of purpose. Singleness of purpose. Let's look at James chapter 1, verses 5 to 8. James 1, 5 to 8. So we're talking about singleness of purpose. And this is very, very important. Well, every, every other one is important. <laughs> okay. James 1, 5 to eight. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Oh, this is powerful. You know, um, the Bible is saying here that for us to be able to make a success, you know, of uh, fulfilling God's purpose for our lives, of accessing everything that we need to do that, we need to be of one mind, single-mindedness, singleness of purpose, you know, not double-minded. You know, most people, um, we waste a lot of spiritual energy being double-minded. OK, and uh, it doesn't help at all. So we need to be focused, single minded about it. Once we know this is I mean, it's not something that you come about easily. Just bring something nearly really out of the heart. No, no, no. It's something that you seek God's face about to be sure that this is exactly what uh, he wants you to be doing. And once you know that, then you need to focus on it. It's very easy to get distracted, especially if you're the kind of person that can do a thousand and one different things excellently that is even more challenging than somebody who only has one or two skills somebody who has only one or two skills is not difficult for them to know which one to pursue you know but when somebody has a lot of skills you know and they are excellent at doing a lot of things it presents uh, um, a problem in the sense that you need to be clear that this is exactly what god wants you to be doing in a particular season in your life otherwise one would just be wasting time doing things that one is not meant to be doing, all right? Because if you're doing what you're not supposed to be doing, that means that you're leaving uh, aside what you're supposed to be doing, okay? And I honestly believe that, you know, like the Bible says that uh, the um, be massive judgment, when we get there, that our works will be tested and will be rewarded for all that we've done. You know, there is a reward at the end of the day. We need to be clear about that, okay? We're not just leaving 
for the sake of it, just doing things, you know, just because we just want to do it. No, no, no. There is a reward. The Bible says that we should, everyone, the person who sticks, you know, who, who hangs on to the end will be rewarded. Okay. So we're encouraged to really uh, stick to, you know, focus on what God's called us to do because we know there is a reward at the end of the day. Okay, so singleness of purpose, so that we are not double-minded, so that we will not be, we will not be short of whatever it is that God has in store for us. You know, um, singleness of purpose it helps us a great deal to be able to fulfill God's purpose for our lives. Then also we need to develop God-centered values. You know, to you know, remember when you're when you're ministering to people, your your ministry should be you know should bring value to those people should be a blessing to them should be bring value to them okay and uh, here we see that god-centered values help us to do that those values are based on the fruit of the spirit okay uh, in contrast to the way of the world the way the world acts you know these values are based on the fruit that the holy spirit helps us when we are in christ jesus the holy spirit helps us to produce fruit that's in keeping with this so let's just read it read, read that in galatians chapter galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 okay it says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long-suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control gent gentleness and self-control <laughs> against such there is no law and those who are christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires okay so these are the these make up the fruit of the spirit it's one fruit that has different parts so once we have jesus in our hearts we're empowered and enabled to be able to produce this fruit of the spirit okay and the Holy Spirit helps us to be able to, you know, pay attention to what areas we need to develop out of the fruit. Okay. This is in contrast to the works of the flesh, which we see in verse 19. It says, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. And, and things, other things like that. <laughs> he says, of which I tell you beforehand that just as I told you in time, in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, so we are supposed to produce the fruit of the spirit, okay, so that we can bring glory to God, be a blessing to other people, add value to their lives in whatever God wants us to do. So focusing on um, the purpose of God for our lives in times like this would help us a great deal. Okay, it will help us a great deal. Okay, the, the um, other thing I have here, I mean, this by no means <laughs> um, uh, is the full list of you know um, attributes that we need to have in our lives, ingredients that we need to have in place to help us to fulfill God's purpose for our lives, to keep us focused in times like this. Okay, so I've got here to be determined to please God. Okay, to live a life of faith, to live a life of faith. Remember we read before in James 1, 5 to 8, that a double-minded person, will not receive anything from God. You see, whatever we receive from God, we receive by faith because it has been provided for us through grace. We don't need to work for it, but we need to apply faith. And faith simply means that you have full confidence in God. All right? You are fully persuaded that whatever God says, he means. You know, so you take him at his word and you act accordingly. Okay, so that's faith. So anything on the contrary, like that guy in James 1, 5 to 8, double-minded person. You know, the Bible says that, you know, he cannot receive anything from God. And if we look at Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, 
we know that it's, it's, not only will he not be able to receive anything from God, all right? The Bible says that he cannot even please God. He can't even please God. Remember, one of the first things that we do, you know, with whatever God's called us to do is to be a blessing to God, to bring him pleasure, right? The Bible says that he made us for his own pleasure, all right? So when we execute our purpose, you know, the first uh, thing we do is to bring pleasure to God. And here, Hebrews eleven six, the Bible is saying that, you know, unless you actually live in a certain way, you can't, you know, bring pleasure to God. And that is absolutely important. Hebrews eleven six. Oh, sorry, I got the wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Yeah, Hebrews 11 and verse 6. So that's the book of faith. Okay, the hall of, hall of faith. <laughs> so 11, 6, it says, But without faith, that is, being fully persuaded that God is able to fulfill what he says. Okay, that God cannot lie. He's not a man that should lie. If he says anything, he means it. If you take him at his word, you will get the re reward, the result. Okay, so without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. All right. So without faith, it's impossible to please God. And we need to be determined to please him, which means that we need to make up our minds that we are going to live by faith, not by sight. You know, the world system says, you know, uh, seeing is believing. But in God's system, in the kingdom system, you believe first before <laughs> you see. Okay, that is the way it works in the kingdom. That is the way of faith. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. Okay, we walk by faith and not by sight. You see, if God tells you everything that's going to happen and how it's going to happen, then there's a possibility that you'll mess it up anyway. So God does not tell us, <laughs> you know, the whole thing. He just gives us a promise. That is the end result. He now expects us to believe him for it. So when we believe him for that promise, then we, it's not our business to find out how he works it out. That's his prerogative. He has a thousand and one ways to get things across to us or to make things happen in our lives. Okay, so we, by faith, have to trust him and believe him that whatever he promises, he's able to deliver. Just like Solomon said, that God promised his father with his mouth and then with his power, he fulfilled it. And that is the promise of him building the temple. So the same goes for us. Whatever God has promised us, he is able to fulfill. All we need to do is trust him. That, that verse in uh, Corinthians talks about how, you know, all the promises of God in Christ Jesus, they are yes. Okay, so every promise that you see in the Bible, God has said yes to in Christ Jesus by virtue of what he did on the cross of Calvary. Okay, he ratified it in his own blood. God said yes to every promise. So all we need to do is come along, find the promise, and we say amen to it. God has said yes, so we just agree with God and say amen. Amen means so be it. So that is the way of faith. That is the way we live by faith. All right. So that double-minded person in James, it appears as if one minute he's saying amen to what God has said. And then the next minute he's going through a doubt or uh, unbelief attack. That's what I call a doubt attack. <laughs> you know, when you are standing in faith, the enemy just comes with, you know, uh, some thought that just, you know, say, oh, supposing it doesn't happen. Supposing da, 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 da. You see, when you are fully persuaded, those, you don't even consider those at all. Because considering it takes you into the realm of doubt, into the realm of unbelief, and before you know it, fear was kicking. And uh, remember, Jesus said we should not be afraid 365 times in the Bible. So the enemy's aim is to get us into the realm of the negative, into the realm of fear, to the realm of doubt and unbelief. 
But the Holy Spirit keeps us in the realm of faith, which is the realm of God. That is the realm of the miraculous. That is the realm where God manifests his power. You know, because it's by faith that we access the power of God. Our faith licenses God to move on the earth, to move in our life. It, it, it authorizes God. It taps into the power of God, the supernatural power of God, you know, to move in this earth, to move in our situations, in our circumstances. Okay. And that is why the Bible says that, you know, we cannot please God, you know, um, except we live by faith. That's, that's simply what it is. Because if we're not living by faith, it means that we're doubting God. And that means that we are, technically speaking, saying that God, <laughs> I think you're a liar. <laughs> I think you're a liar. I don't believe what you're saying kind of situation. Okay. So we need to be extremely careful. Otherwise, we, we're um, insulting God by our actions or inaction, basically. It's not just what we say. Faith has to be in our hearts and also on our lips. They've got to correspond. You've got to believe in your heart what God has said and declare it in your mouth that yes, you believe it. It is true and it will be, it is your portion because you've agreed with God. And the Bible says that then you would have it. Okay. Because whoever says unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt, but believes in his heart that that which he says shall come to pass. He shall have what he says. Mark eleven twenty three. Okay, so that is absolutely powerful. So I'll just go through these things rapidly again. The fact that we need to be dedicated, we need to be uh, committed and dedicated to God's purpose, not for us to be able to fulfill just like Jesus did. Then we need to keep him first, God first, and his righteousness, his way of doing things. We need to learn how God operates in different areas. Is it to receive your health, your healing? Is it finances? Is it, you know, uh, deliverance, protection? The way God operates, we need to learn it, okay, and operate that way. Once we do that, all other things, he said, will be added unto us. Then we need to have singleness of purpose and not be sing not be double-minded. We need to be single-minded, okay? Um, we need to be God, we need to have God-centered values that are based on the fruit of the Spirit, you know, that way we're able to be a blessing to people, minister to them, you know, and add value to their lives. And that's uh, fulfill, what fulfilling our purpose is all about. And then finally, we need to be determined to please God. And that involves living by faith, determined to live by faith. That way we can please him. All right. Okay, so I'm going to sign off today. And um, if this has been a blessing to you, make sure you like comment and share click notification button and if you're watching it on youtube our youtube channel is summit ministries international uk so if you watch it there make sure you do the same comment uh, thumbs up share subscribe and click the bell button so you know first before everyone else when next we upload a video a new video okay i just pray god's blessing upon you and uh, I'll see you tomorrow as we continue this series. All right. Bye for now. God bless you.